But the next night we were supposed to go out for Valentine's Day. I was like, let's go out for Valentine's Day. Enjoy the night so that we can, let's try and enjoy ourselves. And then the next time, the next day we'll talk, we'll have our talk. So let's say that, well, we didn't make it that far. We got to Valentine's Day dinner um, the night we were celebrating and some, somehow some topic got brought up that, that caused tension. And I, again, was like, I don't want to talk about this if there's going to be tension. And we kind of got a little bit heated and he basically wanted me to admit that I was always attacking him at the dinner table. He's like, fine, I'll let it go. We can talk about it later, but I want you to admit that you're always attacking me. Something like that. It wasn't those exact words, but it was similar to that. And I was like, but I don't think I do. I don't think I am. So I don't, I don't think I can say that. Like, I didn't feel like I ever yelled at him or came at him aggressively, you know? And so he got really, I could see he changed his face changed. And he looked at me, he's like, this is not going to be good. And I could feel it. I just felt this rush through my body and he got the waitress and he got the check and he got up and he left. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm revealing how I ruined Valentine's Day. Yep, I ruined it. My guest Anya was married to a narcissist, which was a struggle, but she was crushed when he told her he wanted a divorce. He agreed to go to marriage counseling, and that's when things started to turn around. Today, her marriage is happy and peaceful, and they are making big plans for their future together. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. But first, here's how I ruined Valentine's Day, which John calls my high holy day, because I teach the six intimacy skills that help create this sweet, kissy environment that we have around here most of the time. And in retrospect, I had some hubris and some expectations in my blind spot. I believed that I was immune from feeling the pressure of this one particular day having to be the most romantic, coupley, meaningful day of the year. But I was wrong. And as Catherine Aird said, if you can't be a good example, you will just have to be a horrible warning. And since Valentine's Day was on a Tuesday last year, I said, let's have a nice dinner here. And he was like, cool. But it was also a work day. So I was trying to write some emails and get my podcast done. And his brother was here because he's always here on Tuesdays. But I was like, well, fine. Uh, But when is he going to leave so we can have our nice romantic dinner? Now, if it hadn't been Valentine's Day, I'd be like, hey, I'm pretty hungry. I'll see if his brother wants to stay for dinner or I'll have a snack. But I didn't do that because it was Valentine's Day which everyone knows means dinner has to just be the two of you. So John took his brother home and he was gone for longer than I expected. So when he got back, I was like, why were you gone so long? So good thing I'm not controlling or anything. And he was like, oh, sorry about that. Well, let's have our nice dinner now. And I was like, no, no, we're not doing that now. Even as it was happening, I thought, I do not like this tone of voice that I hear coming out of my mouth. And I realized I was going to have to apologize later, but I didn't have the wherewithal to snap out of it and be pleasant. I'd already gone all the way over the falls emotionally. So we just sat there awkwardly for a while, not talking with the flowers and the chocolates and the card that he got me on the table in front of us. And I was thinking, no one must ever find out about this. So follow me for more tips on how to have a great relationship. Right. Well, I was trying to figure out where John messed up and I couldn't really think of anything. So then it was pretty clear that I did this to myself. I got over hungry and stressed and I just waited around instead of taking care of myself, just like I used to in the bad old days. Ugh. Only then it would have taken a lot longer to get back to holding hands and laughing together, which we did as soon as I calmed down and apologized. I admit my marriage isn't perfect and the heavy expectations around Valentine's day, they got the best of me. Finally, I did apologize for being cranky and there was so much grace. I still had an emotional hangover for the rest of the night, but 
everything was fine between us again. And there's so much grace because most of the time I use the intimacy skills that make my marriage shiny and amazing. Now I can see that I would have benefited from the intimacy skill of making myself happy instead of just waiting for him and expressing my desires in a way that inspires instead of just assuming he knew. But as a mere mortal woman, I forgot. If I ever get to be perfect with the intimacy skills, I'll be sure to send you a postcard and let you know what that's like. But until then, take my advice. I won't be needing it. Even though I didn't want anyone to know that I ruined Valentine's Day, I'm so grateful for you listening and seeing me just as I am and standing for me to be the woman and the wife that I aspire to be. And I'm so grateful for you sharing about the time that you weren't your best self either in group coaching calls, in relationship coach training, in our coaches meetings, and on this podcast. I'm grateful for the emotional safety I have to just be myself. I have a feeling I'll do better this Valentine's Day. There's something about all of us being mere mortal women together that makes me feel strong. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest, Anya, was married to a narcissist, which was a struggle, but she was crushed when he told her he wanted a divorce. He agreed to go to marriage counseling, and that's when things started to turn around. Today, her marriage is happy and peaceful, and they are making big plans for their future together. She's going to tell us how she did it so you can do it too. Anya, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. So nice to meet you. And thank you so much for the skills. Thank you for all your hard work putting them together. And I'm like, so excited to have them now. It's really changed how I approach my relationship, this one and a lot of my relationship. So thank you so much. Wow. Okay. I want to hear all about that. That's great. That's great to hear. Well, let's start with the battle days though. Let's hear, I'd love to hear what was going on at your house. Okay. Well, before the battle days, I just want to give you a little little snippet of the good old days because we had a really like sweet meeting and romance when we first met we were both single parents we each had two kids and we met on um, a dating site it was eHarmony and back when before there were apps this was over 15 years ago and um, we were each other's first date on the site and we hit it off so well and um, he was he was so sweet and he was really chivalrous and he really um, courted me and he was different than anyone I had been with or, you know, previous exes who, you know, my ex-husband and any ex, because he was just reliable. And he was, I never wondered where he was. He always was got back to me and he made it clear. He was like serious about pursuing me and that he wanted a commitment with me. And he, he, in those first, you know, that first year or so was just showed up as my hero a lot. Like he saved the day a lot and really helped me as a single mom. And like, I could see how we were, how good of a team we could be. Um, so we moved really quick. Like we were both adults with small kids. Uh, he had a teenager and a small kid. I had two small children and he, um, we kind of, it kind of pushed us to move quickly. And so we were engaged within about six months. And then we got married uh, on our um, one year anniversary of our first date. Wow. So it was and then it was around then we were blending families. And then we brought another we had our own child. And so life just got really hectic. It went from, you know, some sort of order to kind of complete chaos with, you know, blending families and all the ages the kids were and a new baby and everything. And um, around that time, that's when things kind of started. I started getting little peaks of the battle days um, mm -hmm. when life, the the more hectic life got, um, you know, those were the times that 
I started having little, we started having some problems. And some of the things that would happen, like all of a sudden there would be this uncharacteristic, what I thought uncharacteristic behavior. He would get kind of critical of me. Um, you know, I would, I wouldn't really fully understand for a long time what would cause the fights all the way. Um, I, you know, I, to me, they seem like misunderstandings. To me, it seemed like a miscommunication or maybe I made a little mistake. Um, and I felt like sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes his reactions were really, really strong and I didn't understand where they were coming from all the way. So, you know, little things, I would say something or question him on something and he would maybe lash out with a criticism and then I, it would kind of shut me down and, and we'd have this kind of back and forth. And sometimes it would lead to kind of a bigger, a bigger fight where sometimes it would escalate and he would, you know, yell at me and get really angry. So I started seeing like these, these bits of anger and I, it was, it was scary to me because he had right. always been so even killed. And, and then I started kind of wondering, like, did I get myself, what, I, what did I really get myself into? Like, did I, is this the same person? But then, you know, things would go back to this sweetness, the kindness. So we would have kind of this cycle and the more stress we had, the more hectic it was. I feel like the cycles would happen more frequently. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have phases where, they, where it didn't happen um, at all. So we've been together now, now it's been 16 years, a little over 16 years. And I would say probably like from our third year of marriage to maybe our 11th or, well, I mean, that's a long time. Or actually, that's not true. I would say it got really bad our seventh year of marriage, probably seventh year of marriage. And for like four or five years, it got it was tough. Like I didn't know sometimes what I should do. And I felt really alone. We'd have cold wars that would minimum last three days, but they could go on for longer. They could go on for longer. There was one fight we got into where he, we didn't speak for four days and he went on a business trip for three days and we didn't talk. And while he was gone, I was like, are we still going to be married? And it was just, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't, I didn't fully understand. So I felt unheard. I felt like I wasn't being heard. Um, and I felt like, I felt like I wasn't being heard and I kind of felt like I was being blamed for a lot of things that, um, because a lot of the things that would set him off were little, 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 little mistakes, little comments. So, um, it was really confusing. I'm trying to think, I'm going to look and see if there's anything so, else. That I so this, this is scary because it, it sounds like you thought you married one man and then as you got into the marriage, you realize like there's this other side of him you hadn't seen. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And so you're feeling like maybe this is not who you thought you married. Yeah, maybe I kind of in my mind was like, was this a bait and switch? Like, yeah, I don't bait and switch. I don't yeah. I and I just didn't un I just I don't know. I was confused and I felt lonely a lot, especially when we were having the Cold Wars. And I just didn't it felt, it feels even lonelier to be lonely when you're married. Like, oh, yeah. like you're like, you feel like you should have it this way. And then you just, you feel so lonely. Um, but we had a, I, I guess like about nine months before COVID hit, my husband had left a job that had gotten really stressful for him. He decided, you know, I'm going to take a hiatus. I'm, I've, I've done this job for a long time. I really want to decide what my next move is. So he made plans to take a break. And when his stress levels went down, everything was so much better. So I was like, okay, well, maybe it's his stress levels. You know, I kind of was like, maybe this, maybe that's what it, maybe that's what it is. So thank goodness he left that job. And then when he was about to start looking for another job, COVID hit. And so that was stressful. But the thing about us is that we, um, we do really well, like we don't do well with stress, but we're a really good team when it comes to crisis. So when COVID came along, some of the stress was lifted because I stopped working. My work schedule is super hectic. I travel a lot for work. He and I are both career people. So we have a lot to juggle. Like not one of us is at home usually. You know, we're, we're kind of juggling kids, a lot of business travel for me. So for me, my stress levels were always high for sure. And so when COVID hit, um, I had the chance to really do more for myself, spend quality time with my kids, spend quality time with my family. So even though we had stress of like, 
what's happening in the world. And like, I'm on furlough. Well, and my industry was hit really, really hard. So we were wondering like, will I have a job to go back to, you know, he had, he had left his job and it's hard to find a job during COVID when you've had, you know, eight or nine months off, which he was doing it as a productive break, but it, it, you know, it kind of throws a little wrench in it. So, but even when all that was going on, because we had more time together and because these were more serious things, we really were a team and we didn't fight hardly at all over COVID during COVID. And for probably the the whole year after COVID, I had a very light work schedule. And so I kind of thought like, maybe like his break, he's worked through his anger, um, you know, and, and during all, a lot of the, so maybe he's worked through his anger. He's come to a better place. Like I was kind of diagnosing everything. Like we've had more time together. I've had time to like decompress because I knew I was stressed. So I kind of started realizing, you know, my stress I'm sure contributed to some of that. And so I was like, yay, we've done it. And then he had, he found a job pretty quickly and he loved, he loved this job. Um, he, he enjoyed it. He was passionate about it. He's really good at it. And then about a year after COVID, my job, my, my industry picked up. And so I started traveling more than ever. I was overworking myself. I was not taking good care of myself. I was living in a lot of hotels and airplanes and touching base in between. And the fighting started to come back. And I was just like, this is the time in my career and life that I have to get through. And this fighting, I I just, I don't know what to do about it. It got, it got very, very, very stressful. And at this time, you know, I, I did open up to some friends because I was so disappointed that the progress that I thought we had made had disappeared. And, you know, I thought I was wrong about whatever I thought was fixed. I don't know why that was fixed. I don't know now why it's broken again. And now I really don't know how to fix it. And so I started opening up to some, a few of my closest girlfriends. Um, and I have a friend who has, uh, ha- has some problems in her marriage too. And you know, she, we, st- she started, you know, these are signs of a narcissist. These are signs of a narcissist. So I started like getting sent, like I had a friend send me an article about that. And so then I start thinking, and like, not all the behaviors on there were the same, but a few of, some of them were. And so it kind of gave me these behaviors almost to look out for. And so the, it, to me, it started adding up, you know? So then I'm like, oh no, like it's worse than I thought, you know, it's worse than I thought. Um, what kinds of so, things were you seeing that that matched? What did you say? What kinds of things were you seeing? Um, so one of the things when we fought that got confusing is he would gaslight. Um, sometimes like take we'd fight about this little thing and then bigger things would be pulled in to and maybe sometimes things that weren't fully true. So like that was a big one. Um be like the anger, um, those were the biggest ones. The anger, um, I mean, those were kind of, it it was more along those lines that were the, the behaviors that lined up. And so, so then in my mind, I'm like, wow, we've got even bigger problems than I thought. So I was pretty, I got to a place where I was pretty lonely, pretty unhappy and pretty like, just so sad, so sad, so, so tired of the fighting. Uh, anyway, I, I just wanted, I wanted, but I love him so much, like things in between, I'd see these little glimpses and we have so much fun together. That's one thing when we started dating, we laugh all the time when we're getting along, we laugh all the time. So we'd have these bright moments and I would, it, it just kept my hope and my desire to make this work. It, it really kept it, it going. So, so you were never at the place of thinking, okay, I've got to find a, I've got to get a divorce or. I never want to, I never felt like I wanted that. he would in the earlier days of our fighting, he would use that in fights to kind of make things heavier. Like he would kind of use that as a threat. And I had told him at a certain point um, after a few years, I just said, you know, when you do that, it really derails me. And it really like, it's really, it's going to do more damn too much damage eventually if you keep doing that. So he stopped doing that. So he would use that a threat as a threat in the early battle days. And then he didn't do it for a long time. Um, I felt, I don't know, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm a hopeless romantic. I felt like there, there is, we can work this out. And I love him so much. I wanted to work it out with him. Like I wanted, I wanted to be with him. So it wasn't just about hanging on to a relationship. Like I wanted to be with him. 
I love I love him. I loved you him. Love I've always him. loved him. You yeah. Love him. You never lost sight of it. Yeah. Yeah. And and um so so you but you've decided he is a narcissist, it sounds like. Yeah, in that mo- in those moments I did. In those moments I did. Um and I was doing um I was trying I was working on myself. I'd been a big self-help person for a long time, a lot of like energy work and meditation and um things like that just to work through a lot of things from my from my past and so I was I was really trying to work on myself to to keep moving forward you know um but that that time after the the pandemic when when I was working so hard things kind of yeah thing I don't know things got really really bad and that kind of led to where kind of the path, this, the, the path of where it almost led to divorce. <clears throat> so what, what happened? Was there a big fight? There were, there was, it was like six months leading up to this. So during all that time that I was traveling a lot, I, and was, I was very unhappy. I started drinking, started drinking more. I started kind of relying I I drink wine at night to kind of take a break from the pain and, um, you know, we had our ups and downs and it got to a point where we got into a handful of fights very close together. And one of them was really bad. And it really started out as, as kind of a, a what I thought at the time was a, a pointless dumb fight. I didn't understand how I set him off as much as I did, but in that fight, he brought up divorce and I was like, can we go to counseling? And he was like, absolutely not. We had tried counseling once in the past and he hated it. He didn't like how it went. He didn't like the therapist. He felt like he was picked on and he did not, he's like, I'm not doing that again. And so after this fight, I took it really seriously because he hadn't used that word in so long. And so we didn't talk for a couple of days. And when we finally did talk, he just asked, he had asked me to stop drinking for six months. He, He thought that the drinking was what was causing me to be unhappy and he thought that that's what was causing our fights and he, yeah i know it was an ouch but at the same time even though i didn't agree with him and i felt really it was that was a hard one because there i was thinking like i'm not being heard yeah you're being critical of me all the time i feel like you're taking your anger out on me but now you're telling me that i need to fix myself yeah oh and, and you're same... saying i drink too much really mm-hmm. right that's yeah I mean, and and at the time yeah i right. was i was i was i wasn't being healthy and and that wasn't you know that wasn't a long-term solution by any means but i also love him and it was important to him and if he's asking me to do that then i said okay then i i'll do that and he open. said i'll do it i'll do it with you we'll do it together so he would he did it in a kind you know he it it hurt my feelings that he wanted that he was pinning it all on that yeah but at the same time he he was doing it in a supportive way and so he said let's just not drink for six months so I was like, all right, I'll do that. I'll do it. And so I did that. But during that time, I also had a lot of clarity to think about our relationship. And so I identified like a super short list of two things that I needed from him that I really wanted to see changes in. Um, Seems fair because he asked you to make a big change. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. And, but I was scared to, I was scared to be specific about what I wanted him to change because I was so confused. I never, I didn't understand what caused all the fights anyway. So I felt like they were all always caused by these little things. And I felt like me asking him to change these two things were big things. And that if he's always, you know, flying off the handle at little things, like how can I bring these big things up to him? So I I kind of was in like a lot of walking on eggshells a lot. So I just decided instead of making a big dramatic declaration of these are the things I need you to change that I would try to address them as they came up. And so the two things I wanted to change were for him to not like critique and lash out at me and snap at me. And then for him to listen to my side, because I feel like anytime we had an argument, I never, ever got to share like, this is the side of things that hurt me. These are the things that hurt me. So I just wanted to be heard and I didn't want to be snapped at anymore, which I didn't think, I thought those aren't not huge things to ask for. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. So I just started, like, if he would 
snap at me, I would stay very calm and I would try and talk through it. And then if he would escalate, I would just say, I'm not going to have this conversation if we're, if there's any yelling involved. And that kind of worked a couple times to get through a few small situations, but then he was kind of onto it and found a way to, he, he didn't like, he still didn't like it. We got through it, but he didn't like it. So that started to backfire. And so over that six months, we would have good times, but then because I was like standing up for myself, um, it, it, it made things worse overall. Like we, we were, he was starting to, I don't know, his behavior was changing and it wasn't necessarily in the direction I wanted it to be changing in. Um, but we got to a place. Um, so, so this was the, I stopped drinking in the summer and then for the holidays, we kind of were like, okay, we can have some wine now. And all of that was okay. We're, you know, uh, he felt comfortable with that. Um, but then, so Valentine's day was approaching. He had to work on Valentine's day. So we decided the night before Valentine's day, we were going to celebrate, but in the days leading up to that, we had gotten in some fights and he had asked me like, and it, I, I actually had hope for a minute because he told me like, maybe we should have a conversation. I'm, you seem really unhappy and I want to know what we can do. And so I was like, okay, let's, let's have that conversation. But the next night we were supposed to go out for Valentine's day. I was like, let's go out for Valentine's day, enjoy the night so that we can, let's try and enjoy ourselves. And then the next time, the next day we'll talk, we'll have our talk. So let, let's say that, well, we didn't make it that far. We got to Valentine's day dinner um, the night we were celebrating and some, somehow some topic got brought up that, that caused tension. And I, again, was like, I don't want to talk about this if there's going to be tension. And we kind of got a little bit heated and he basically wanted me to admit that I was always attacking him at the dinner table. He's like, fine, I'll let it go. We can talk about it later, but I want you to admit that you're always attacking me. Something like that. It wasn't those exact words, but it was similar to that. And I was like, but I don't think I do. I don't think I am. So I don't, I don't think I can say that. Like, I didn't feel like I ever yelled at him or came yeah. at him aggressively, you know? Yeah. And so he got really, I could see he changed, his face changed. And he looked at me, he's like, this is not going to be good. And I could feel it. I just felt this rush through my body. And he got the waitress and he got the check and he got up and he left. And I was just sitting there. And I just like slowly like gathered my stuff and I went outside and he was in the car and I got in the car and we went home and he just made sure to let me know I wasn't included. And he went and got the Valentine's treats. He had bought all the kids and started giving those out, started hanging out with them. And then I just was like, uh Oh, something's coming. You know, I just knew something, this is something's, something's different. Something broke. Be something broke, something totally broke. And so we had like total, the coldest, coldest, coldest war ever. He like slept on the couch and would not talk to me. And if I was in the room, I could feel the anger just coming off of him. And so I tried my best to like go to work and live and do, you know, do, do my day, you know, do my day and go through my day. And two days after this had happened, I had my I'd taken my son to a doctor's appointment and I was looking on my phone and he had stopped sharing his location with me on my phone, on the phone. And I thought at first I had accidentally done it. So I was like, shoot, if I accidentally did that, the way the, the message was a little confusing that popped up. So we hadn't texted, we hadn't spoken. So I texted him. So I didn't want him to think I had stopped sharing location in that instance because I didn't want to send that message. And so I was afraid I had accidentally done it. So I sent him a text saying, Hey, I think I somehow accidentally stopped sharing location with you. And I didn't mean to, and I tried to share it with him again. And he declined it and said, I'm the one who did that. And so, so that was my confirmation. I'm like, okay, this is, this is serious. And so then the next couple days, uh, like two days later, we were, I was trying to like, find minute moments here and there to like enjoy myself with my kids or like just find peace. Cause I was so, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. Like it was, it was hard. And yeah. one morning I was going from my bedroom to the kitchen and he was in the living room, which he passed through and he made sure to have his hand in a way so that I could see his ring was off. And that was just like a gut punch. So we hadn't talked, but he just showed me like it's off. So 
I was just like freaking out. So anyway, so a few days later, he wanted to have a, he's like, we should talk. And for some reason, I don't know why, but he gave me two options of days to talk the following Saturday or the Saturday after that. And I was like, I cannot talk about a divorce in two days. I'm going to wait till then. I need time. I need to get myself. I just need to get myself. I was a mess. I was like such a mess. So I was like, I need to pull myself together so I can figure out how to get through this. So I was like, okay, fine. We'll do the next week talk. So the second week of our um, living together, he was kind of starting to warm up, but still making it obvious that he doesn't want to be married anymore. It was really confusing because there was some niceness, but then that made it worse in a way. And so anyway, we finally get to our talk and he tells me, he's like, I love you so much. I don't think you understand how much I love you. I'm in love with you, but oh. I can't live like this. He's like, I cannot live like this anymore. I'm, I'm miserable. I'm totally miserable. He's like, last week I was this close to signing a year lease. I was looking at apartments. He's like, that's why I stopped sharing location with you. Um, because I didn't want you seeing where I was going and that I was going to these places, but I, I found an apartment. I almost signed a lease on it. The ladies waiting to hear back from me. I went there and watched the neighbors to see what kind of people were going to live there. I wanted to get a feel for it. I brought one of the dogs there to just see what it felt like. So he was like feeling oh. this out and he's like, um, and, and so I was shocked when he was telling me all this. And so all I could say was, because in my mind before that conversation, I knew things needed to change in our marriage. We obviously weren't doing a very good job at doing that. We both tried for years and it's not working. And so I just, my, my like sticking point was that if he's not willing to go to counseling to try and make some changes, we can't just jump back into it and like struggle and like drown again, you know? But I knew that the ch chances for him agreeing to that were slim. So when he got to that point, I just said, well, have you, or do you still feel the same way about marriage counseling? Like, are you still totally against it? And he, he said, you know, the only thing I've changed my mind about is that the only way you and I are going to be able to get through this is if we find a really good marriage counselor who can help us. We need to find someone really good who knows what they're doing. Cause he felt like our last one, he felt like she just wasn't a good one. Um, and so he wanted to find a quality therapist. Sure. So I was elated. I was like, yes, let's do it. I will, what, you know, what, what do you want me to look for in a therapist? I will, I'll, I'll look for, for them. I'll let you pick from a group I choose and let's do that. So we were super happy that we wanted to make that work. And so I set to work. I, I, I prayed, I like ask angels for help all the time. That's how I like get strength. And that's kind of how I pray. I'm not a certain religion, but I'm, that's my spirituality. So the whole time I'd been asking the angels be with me, help me know how to get through this, help save this. I, I want this, like help me get to the right place. So I was like, thank you angels. Now we got to find the perfect therapist. Help the me perfect find the perfect therapist. Yeah. So that was like the no pressure, uh, but this therapist, no, be this perfect. Is pressure. We need the perfect therapist. We need the perfect therapist because if we, if I brought him in, it was someone he didn't like, it would just go kablooey. Yeah. yeah. So I started looking for the criteria I looked for in a therapist. I, they had to have a PhD because he wanted someone very educated and, and really good. And then I wanted someone who had experience with dealing with narcissist behavior. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so I was glad I got to do the screening because he, he wouldn't have screened for narcissist behavior. So I was like, we got to have both. Yes. Got to so, have both. And, yeah. we're, and you and I are laughing a little bit because because we know how this ends. But yes, at the time, this felt like this was a major part of your problems. Mm -hmm. you're, you're married to a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And unless this therapist knows how to fix that, we, we might be at a dead end. Right. It might be at a dead end. So, so, okay. So the, these criteria, so you were, yes. so you're looking around, so you find. So I find four, I email or I, I, I put their profiles together from the, from online and I send them to him. He, he takes two out. He's like, not these two, but these two look good. So I get in touch with them both. Neither of them are seeing people in person because it's too close after COVID. Sorry, we're not taking new patients. Sorry, we're not doing marriage counseling because we're not seeing in person. So back to the drawing board. I just keep every day. I'm kind of putting a little time into searching, emailing, searching, emailing. Well, in the meantime, we're doing our best to not fight, to not trigger each other. So we're being loving and kind, but 
kind of superficial. Like we right. can't talk about anything deep, but we're trying to just like keep the bandaid on to like get there. And you're still and walking on eggshells really, right? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And one thing that I didn't say, that's another little piece that was kind of happening before our breakdown is because my trust had been rattled. Like I had a hard time trusting him because I felt like if you can say these mean things to me and like, it's that easy like what other things could you do? You know, and I've never thought he was ever someone that would, I, that infidelity would be an issue. Like I've never thought that, but in those, those months, because I was so insecure, it's almost like I was looking for any reason to explain the behavior. And like, I don't know, I just, I got a little cuckoo in my brain. Like You're I was just broken. You're yeah, heartbroken. It's just, terrified, just, terrified. Right. And so mm -hmm. who wouldn't be pretty scared and having your mind go into scarier places. Yes. And so I would ask him once in a while if there was something unexplained that like my mind got away with me. I'd be like, and I would preface it with like, I know I'm probably just overreacting about things because I'm insecure, but can you explain this? Or can you explain this? He was patient about it at first, but I could tell it was kind of annoying, but I think he was trying to be there for me and make me feel at peace. Well, something came up in this phase after we were reconciling and trying to find a, a therapist. I found a Valentine's Day bag, like gift bag in the trunk of his car and it was empty. So my mind went crazy and I'm like, did somebody give him a gift? Like my mind just was, I don't know. It's silly now. I look back now and I'm like, that was like, so kind of dumb. But in the moment it was so real and I couldn't shake it. I, I couldn't shake it. It just kept eating at me, eating at me. So I asked him and I was like, again, I know there's probably such a good explanation for this, but I last night in your trunk, of your car, I was tr looking for something and I found this bag. What is it? And he was like, that was from the gift I bought you on Valentine's day that I took back because we got in that big fight. And I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. You're dead. That makes total sense. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm, and you could tell he was kind of annoyed, but we ended up having an okay night. And then the next morning, it was a Sunday morning. I woke up. I'm like, something's off. He's not talking to me. He's cold. And he wouldn't talk to me. And I um, I went to run an errand. And when I came back, I was like, what's going on? Like, are you, what, what happened? Did I do something? You know, I was trying to just get him to talk. And he was like, you know, I'm done. I'm done. You, you accuse me of, you know, I'm trying to go through you know, the steps to reconcile with you. And here we go again. You're accusing me of cheating on you. I've never done that. But, and he just, he just, he built, he, another thing he would do is just like build a story in his head about my intentions or about what I had done and just kind of like put it on me. That's why I didn't feel heard because I could never say, no, it's not that this is what it really is. He would just say, I know this is what it is and I won't listen to you. And so I'm just like begging him. I'm like, please don't like, we haven't even made it to the counselor. Please, please. Like, can we please? And he's just like, no, I'm done. You're taking this ring off again. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, shoot. And, and he also accused me of not looking for counselors, but I wasn't, sh I, I realized that counselor, the counselors were so hard to find. And like a lot of them weren't taking new clients where they weren't seeing people in person. I had stopped telling him every single person I was looking into. I thought I want to get some people that I know are taking people before I show them to him. So he didn't know I was still as hard. He didn't know how hard I was working to find a counselor and he wouldn't listen to me. Wouldn't let me explain that either. So I was devastated. I was devastated, but I had been through the hurt before. And so it was a little easier that time for me to be like, okay, we're back to this. And so we decided like the following weekend, we lived together in the house and kind of avoided each other. And a week later, we decided to leave the house to go have a conversation. We got in the car and went and drove and started talking. And he, he was start he wanted to, he was asking me what I thought, how we should handle this divorce. And at first I was resisting. So I'm like, I don't want to handle a divorce. I don't want it. I don't want to do this. I don't want it. And then I realized that his mind was made up. And so I'm like, I can't like make a fight out of this too. I don't want the fighting. I don't want to go through a divorce with the fighting. I want to go through, I want to go through this as easy as we can. And I love him. I love him. I love him. And so I'm just going to do my best to suck it up and make it as easy as possible for me, for him, for the kids. I just have to like do it. So I finally was like, 
I was like, okay, well, what do you want out of it? And he's like, I want it done by my birthday. I want the paper signed by my birthday, which was only like two and a half months away. And so I was like, okay, okay. I'm like, I think that should be doable if we keep it amicable. And I was like, I would like you to not run off and just sign a lease really quickly. I'm like, I would like a little bit of time. I'm like, you know, we started talking about the finances and the only way for us to make it work was for him to stay in the house a little bit longer. And so I was like, I just want time to see if I can find a way to keep the house. Cause I didn't want to have, you know, the kids were already going to be uprooted with him leaving. And I wanted at least our house to stay stable. And I've been in that house since before I met him, you know? So I wanted to keep, I wanted to try and keep that house, even though I knew it would be a challenge. And so he's like, well, I'm the only way I can contribute for a few more months is if I live in the house. So if we can keep it amicable, if we're not fighting, if we're not glaring at each other, if we're not, you know, we can keep it cordial, then I I will stay for a couple months so that you can get things in order. So I was like, okay. So we started talking about furniture. What are you taking? What are you leaving? Like we just started just like break it down. Do you want, do you want the dog's as custody when the kids come to your house or, you know, what, all of it, we just started talking about it. And so then we got home and I started making dinner and he came in to help me. And so I was trying to keep a cordial. I was trying not to be too upset with him around. I was just trying, but it's weird. I I got this different, I got this peaceful feeling at that time. Um, and I don't know why, but I just, all of a sudden I just felt like, okay, I just felt peaceful. I didn't feel like this is going to work out, but I just felt like I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. So the next day I call my mortgage guy. I told him what's going on. We talk. He's like, I think we'll be able to make it work for you to keep the house. Great. He's like, when you, when, when you get closer, call me, I'll let you know what we need. Wonderful. So I, I saw and when I got home, I'm like, guess what? I think I'm going to be able, we'll, I'll be able to keep the house. He's like, oh, that's great. So then make dinner again. And then he's like, do you want to get in the hot tub? We have a hot tub. Do you want to get in the hot tub? I'm like, sure. I'm like, I'm just going to go with this. So we get in the hot tub and he's like, how is it that we fight and fight over everything, but now we can just totally get along when we talk about divorce? I'm like, I don't know. We just, we can be a good team. I'm like, we, we know how to be a good team. So that's how, you know, So, and he was like, he's like, I keep picturing going to this apartment and moving in. And all I picture is trying to make it nice for you. I just picture down the road, inviting you over. He's like, for a date. He's like, I'm leaving this house because we can't get along, but you're my dream girl. I want to be with you. So I just like, sorry, it just makes me cry every time. So when he said that, I'm like, then what are we doing? I'm like, then what are we doing? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know how to get through it. I'm like, just so you know, I I found, because I had found a counselor in the middle of all that. I found a counselor. I had um, found this lady. She seemed really nice. She seemed like she had a different approach. She had a PhD. I don't know if she... She wasn't on the same database, so I don't know if she was great at narcissism stuff, but in some reviews, there were some reviews on some tough things she had helped people with, with like, you know, abuse in the marriage and things like that. So I'm like, if she can help with that, she's got the PhD, she's got great reviews, and she had a different approach. It wasn't like come for an hour a week for the rest of your life. It was, I schedule, you know, three three hours for each couple. You don't have to use those three hours, but I never let a couple leave if they're in the middle of a conflict or we've brought something up that, that triggers. Like we, I never let a couple leave until they're in a good spot. So I'm like, that's perfect for us. That's what we need. So I, I told him that and he's like, all right, let's schedule it. Let's schedule it and let's do our best to get there. And he's like, but we need to be honest with ourselves and know that there's still a chance this might not work. And so from that point, I scheduled the appointment, but it was a month away. So we had a month to get through. And in that month, we like bought some concert tickets to some of our favorite bands. But when we did, I was like, I'll buy these. So if we don't make it to that point, they're my tickets and I'll take someone else. And he would do the same or any big decision we made. We kind of made it 
with the premise that like, we don't know where this is going to end up. We don't want to be together the, by then. Yeah. yeah. We might not be together by then. So, wow. so, but we were both doing pretty good with that. Like that felt because it was comfortable for him. It was comfortable for me. And you surrendered. You were so surrendered at this point. Yeah. You Absolutely. Attached. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we, um, we, we make it to our, we, we had a few little fights between that second blow up and the appointment, but we made it through. Um, and then we got to our appointment and the counselor was lovely. He really liked her. I really liked her. We talked about a lot of great things. And in the end, she gave us our homework. And my homework was the empowered wife to read that book. And then she gave him a different book to read. Um, that was kind of like, I imagine kind of sounds like sort of the male version of the empowered wife, but less proactive, just know that this is what women are like and like what you need to do kind of thing. So, so when she was telling me about the empowered wife, she was like, you know, I've seen this work on so, in so many really tough situations. You know, women really are, have a lot of influence on the household and are able to set the tone. I'm just kind of like taking it all in and not really fully understanding what she's meaning or saying. What do you mean? He's the one yeah. that wants the divorce. Like, well, and then I was like, yeah, I was like, well, he's the one who wants the divorce. It feels like he's got a lot more influence maybe. And that in a, for a minute, I was like, maybe we're just like, I don't know. Hopeless. I thought hopefully this is okay because I don't feel like I'm very influential, but we'll see where it goes. So, and then she kept saying to me, keep an open mind, please keep an open mind. And then she let me know that this PhD amazing therapist that I'm visiting tells me that she believes in this book and in this work so much that she was in the middle of the empowered wife's coaching program. She's learning. She was in the middle of learning to be an empowered wife coach. So I'm like, okay, if this lady with a PhD, who's been a marriage counselor, I mean, I don't know how long it looked. It seemed, I think it was like 20, I mean, a lot of years she'd been a marriage counselor and she's now at this stage in her career pivoting to learn this. I was like, Okay, I will keep an open mind. I will. I don't know why she's warning me to keep such an open mind. But I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Kind of scary. Like, what, yeah, what do I have to be open to? But it, it was good that she did. Honestly, she she could she was reading me correctly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I I got the book. I got the audio book. Um, and I started listening to it in the car when I was doing dishes when I was doing anything that I could have my AirPods in, I was listening to the book. <sighs> and at first, <laughs> I was pretty discouraged at first when I first read it. I know a lot of people have ahas and I did, those ahas came, they were in there too. But I think I felt like I had worked so hard for so many years with the right intention to show up in like a, what I thought was like a great way as a great wife. And then I realized like, not only wasn't that working, but some of that was actually making things worse. And I just felt like, I don't know, like, can I learn this whole new thing? Like I questioned, like, do I have it in me to just like keep pushing? Like I had moments where I was like, I, oh, it just felt heavy, but I just kept listening. I just kept listening and like things started to really resonate. And then, and, and then I realized, you know, like, I mean, I, I think I've always realized I didn't understand men at all. Um, I grew up in a household with just my mom and my sister. Um, my, I was my, my mom, my sister and my aunt were the people closest to me. They were all business women. And like, I didn't have brothers. I didn't really have uncles. I was close to, I didn't understand men. I just, I just didn't understand them. And so as I'm reading this book, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. Those are the things that were irritating him and triggering him. Those are the things that were creating these problems, you know? Yeah. So that, there was the aha. Yes. There were, there were a lot of ahas. And I just remember too, in, in, I can't remember even the story I was listening to, but some of it was just so simple. I was almost annoyed that it was so simple that I had made it so hard that one of the, I don't remember the story, but I was listening to a story of how simple this lady had done something so complicated and then just showed up and said one simple phrase and like it magically changed everything. 
that I was like laughing and crying in my car at the same time. Just like, what, what, <laughs> what have I mi- What have I been missing for so long? Like, what have I been missing for so long? Mm-hmm. So I, um, I, yeah, so I, I started to, I started to try and figure out, okay, what is the easiest skill for me to just start trying? I just, I need to try a few things. So I just started throwing gratitude at everything, 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 everything. That was the first thing you started experimenting with. It sounds like. Yes. It's a good place. That's a good place to start. I like it. It was, it was, it was the easiest thing for me. Okay. Okay. Um, so I got like specific with my gratitudes, telling him how happy, you know, anything he did that made me happy. And then I, the other easy thing for me was duct tape. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but it was like something I could do in the moment, I guess. You wanted to experiment with it at least. Yeah. You wanted to give it a try. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where, where, where to go. Well, so, okay. So you, so you started thanking him for everything and you started keeping your mouth shut at times when you normally would have had an opinion to share. It sounds like. Yeah. I was never like super, like I was never naggy. I never was like, there was never a honeydew list or like, I wasn't ever boss. I knew that would never work with him. I knew that like bossiness didn't work or those kind of things. But the ways that I was disrespectful, Respectful, I realized was I would always try and influence his perspective. So instead of just like asking him a question, I would give all this over explanation to like paint the picture of like the situation. And there was just so many extra words. And like, I didn't realize that I was doing that in a way to manipulate his perspective because mm. I wanted him to respond or be in line with my thinking or the way I I wanted something done. So like with parenting, if he and one of the kids were talking, sometimes I felt like he was too hard on the kids. My ears would perk up and I'd be listening and I'd hear like, Oh, I think they're, they're not understanding each other. So I'd go in and try and like clarify. Interpret. Yeah. Like I was always interpreting or like if I asked him to do something or help me with something, um, and he didn't jump up to do it. I start my, the clock, the timer went off in my head. Like, well, when's he going to do it? What's he yeah. doing? When's he is, yeah. oh, he's probably not going to do it. So I get myself all wound up and then start making the little comments or asking the little questions when little did I know he's probably doing some kind of preparation in another way to do that thing that I'm not seeing. Cause he does things different than me, you know? So it was like, a lot of that, like a lot, a lot, a lot of that. And then, so I just tried to only answer the questions he asked because he'd ask a question sometimes and I'd answer like with a lot of extra information. He'd just be like, that's not what I asked you. Like, just answer the question. (laughs) So I, I started noticing those kind of things. I still sometimes start to do that and I'll just be like, just, just, just. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so, so yeah. So how did he respond when you started? What, what kinds of things were you thanking him for too? Like everything, kind of, like every what? little thing. Um, if he brought something home from the store that he noticed that we had been out of, like it, that made me so happy because I didn't have to, you know, leave to go get it or if he had, he, he was also starting to do, you know, in that time it was a little bit honeymoony. So like he was trying to, so like he was bringing home flowers for me and I, you know, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Every time I look at these, I'm going to, it's going to make me so happy. They're so beautiful. So he, he was also, because he had read his book, he was kind of trying, like he was trying to be flexible and, and open, but he got, he just got more patient. He got so much more patient. Like I never, I didn't think he was patient. In my mind, I characterized him as impatient. He's impatient. And he got so much more patient. He he honestly has hardly since then like snapped at me. It's been almost a year now. And he's hardly snapped at me, you know, like, and, and it started then. Like he's just, he, he's patient. He's thoughtful um, and just like softer. 
Wow. And yeah, just like calmer. Well, do you think it's because he read his book? <laughs> I mean, I think I'm sure there's things that help with it. But can I tell you what he said about his book when yeah. I told him I got my book? Yeah. So I got my book like three days after our counseling session. And I told him that I'm like, oh, I got my I just bought my book. I'm going to start listening to it. He's like, oh, I'm almost done with mine. I was like, oh, <laughs> overachiever. OK. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, what do you think? How's it going? He's like, mm, there's a few things I want to ask the counselor about. And I was like, OK. Um, and he's like, but he's like, I kind of think that if most men, even like in their 20s, knew what they had to do to keep a relationship, they probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> Get out of there. It's like, this is, he's like, it's just too, you guys are too much work. <laughs> so that was his yeah. feedback of his book. Like, I'm sure yet, he, there he is. There he is trying to make it work still. Yeah. Yeah. So, sweet. so That's maybe sweet. it helped a little bit, but. Okay. Um, he didn't consider it a major contributor to his perspective or anything. I like. mean, maybe, maybe a little, but yeah, he was kind of like, this is a lot of work. You ladies are a lot of work, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of not, that's not the mode you want him to finish up the book in. You want him to go, oh, I now I'm so aware of the mistakes I was making and how I was being too harsh or impatient. And I'm, I'm able to show up differently now, right? That would be the dream scenario. One thing he did say that has changed is he he's like, I realize why having time with girlfriends is so important. Um, so I'm not supposed to get in between you and girl time. Like oh. you need your time. So that was a good thing oh, he got. Good. Me, but okay, yeah. I, okay, yeah, it yeah, had yeah, some yeah. good it had some good he, he had some good takeaways. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Cool. So um okay, so but so how is he res how was he responding to you being more grateful and maybe more concise? He, he was responding well. We were, there were no, we, we, we weren't fighting. We didn't have fights. We, we had one maybe a month after we saw our counselor, but it was because, um, I hadn't learned the skills all the way yet. Like I was still practicing sure. them yeah. and I wasn't, they weren't automatic to me. So I, I like kind of knew my, my piece in it, how I had kind of helped trigger it. Um, and then I use the skills to like, get out of the cold war and get out of the, the fighting. Oh, how did you do that? <laughs> well, I didn't do it. Per I didn't do it perfectly at first. I kind of, um, at first I, I, I was offended. Um, he offended me. It was a time he did kind of snap at me a little and I didn't know how to say ouch. And so I got kind of quiet and, um, and we were, and anyway, we were having people over. So he and I were kind of awkward with each other while the people were over, but trying to like make it fine. And right. then the next morning when he woke up, he was extra mad at me and like, wouldn't talk to me. And so I kind of at first, like was trying to get him to talk to me instead of just like letting him be. Um, but then I took a little break and we came back to have a conversation and I just listened. I just listened. I just listened. And then, um, once, once he had, you know, started talking or like finished saying what he said and felt heard, I was just like, is there any way we can salvage the rest of our weekend? What, what do you want to do? And we ended up still going to a concert we had planned on going to that night that I thought we were just going to skip because we were fighting. So like it made our, even though we, it like started out the old way, we were able to just kind of wrap it up and get over it in like a 24 hour period rather than like three days, four days, five days. That's pretty good. So it was really good. And it sounds, I think what I hear you saying too, is you, instead of before you were describing how baffled you were about why you're fighting and how to ever fix it, you thought it was fixed for a minute and then it wasn't, and you didn't really know what to do. It sounds like you kind of felt like you knew what went wrong and how to fix it. I was able to figure it out. Yes, that was, it gave me the, it gave me the things to check in on to, to figure out like, okay, this is, this, this is, this is what it was. And the answer is not going to be just you sucking it up and admitting it's your fault for attacking him kind of thing. Right. Or to like have a state of the union and talk about this big thing that had just happened. That was another yeah. thing that yeah. I, you know, thought we needed to do. Now, did you start to feel like, Oh, this is all on me. Like he doesn't really, he's not really doing anything. I'm having to make all the changes. I had, a, I did have a few moments like that around that time. 
around okay. that time I did because I still, the, the skills weren't as, I wasn't as comfortable with them. They weren't as yeah. automatic. Right. And so I did feel burdened for, yeah. I, and luckily I had some great girlfriends to talk to. They're like, this is just a bump in the road. This isn't a failure. This is just a bump in the road. Just keep doing what you're doing. So I got some, I had a couple good girlfriends that were there for me to listen to what I was going through and, and all of that. And so then I was able to like get my strength back and move forward. And then we were able to like, then we had peace. I mean, then since then, I mean, we've, we've only really had a couple, a couple little, little, little arguments, just a couple little arguments since then. And um, what about the, what about him, the year lease on the apartment and him? He never signed it. Nope. He never signed it. We, he never went back to that. And what about divorce? Nope. Never. It never came up. It never, it, it's not come up again. Like we're, we're not getting divorced. You're not getting divorced. Absolutely not. Okay. So, and did he ever say we're not doing that or so, is it just implied? No. So what happened? So this, he took his ring off for the second time after, during that second fight. And he didn't put it back on for a long time. So we went to our first counseling appointment. He didn't have oh, it on. Ring. We made a second counseling appointment for a month later. Um, and so I thought, I'm nervous to bring up the ring by myself. So I'm going to talk about it with our therapist there because she can help if I say it, you know, if I say it the wrong way, she can kind of help me and she can keep it calm. And so I just said, you know, she's like, is there anything you want to talk about? And I was like, yeah, I... There's one thing and I don't want to, I just want to know that it's me, like I'm, I'm kind of sad he hasn't put his ring on yet. So she helped me get to my pure desire because she, and she's feelings. an empowered wife yeah. lady. Yes. And so, <laughs> yes. So she's like, what is your desire there? What is, what do you really need? And I just said, well, you not wearing your ring makes me feel insecure about where we're at in our relationship. And then she said, okay, well, now you can, you can think about that. And, you know, on your own time, you can decide what you want to do. That's what she said to him. So I was like, so I was like, okay, so message, we, we talked about it. He was fine with the message, but then like a month went by and he still wasn't wearing his ring and, and I didn't want to nag and I didn't want to keep asking. Um, and then I was like, how am I going to, I can't just not, I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, okay, I need to. I need to go to my vulnerability. I need to be vulnerable with him. And so we had had a really nice um, one night, a few, like I talked to a girlfriend about this. I'm like, he's still not wearing his ring. And what, what would happen? The reason it was a, a, a big thing for me is I was starting to get comfortable with where we were at, but then I'd have these flashbacks of how bad it was. And I would get very emotional and I would just like kind of panic. Like what if, I don't know. I'd have bad dreams that we were getting a divorce again, or I'd, I, I just think about it and it was just weighing on me. Like I didn't feel a hundred percent secure that he was there, that he was like fully in it. And so one night we had had like a, a nice night. And so we were, you know, kind of talking and cuddling and I kind of, I just kind of opened up to him. Like, you know, a couple of times I've had some bad dreams that we're getting divorced. And other times I'll have little flashbacks of like how hard that was. And like, then it'll go to my mind that like, and he's not wearing his ring and he's not wearing his ring and he's not wearing his ring. And that would, that kind of in a way reinforces my insecurity. And so I'm like, I don't want to like pressure you or anything. And I was kind of like a little weepy and stuff. And he like in the middle of the conversation, he's like, hold on. And he goes to the drawer and starts rifling around. I'm like, what are you doing? And he gets up and he like has his ring on. <laughs> Like, how's now? Is now good enough for you yeah. for me to put my he's, ring on? He's like, I don't want you. He didn't want me sad. You know, he didn't want me insecure. He didn't want me sad. He When he, when he felt like how it was making me feel, he's like, okay, it's on. So you did a great, incredible job going to your vulnerability. Thank you. And he, and he just jumped up and wanted to fix that for you right away. Yeah. So sweet. It was wow. sweet. Okay. And what about, did you ever do an apology for... So because, yeah, I, I did. So we, I think because we were kind like, we were kind of reconciling already when I got the skills, but I still thought, you know, now that I've made these realizations, especially about the controlling stuff and the, um, yeah, like all the, the, the respect and the control with controlling perspectives and things like that. Like, I want, 
I feel like I want to give him an apology, but we didn't have like a big thing to get over, you know, like it wasn't yeah. like icebreaker kind of thing, but I yeah. still wanted to acknowledge it. And so one night when I felt like it was the right time, I was just like, you know, I have just with all the, you know, with this book and because he knew we both knew about each other's books and stuff. And so, you know, I'd, I'd shared with him about, you know, self-care and how that's important and blah, blah, blah. So with with the with the respect thing, I just was like, you know, in our relationship, I um I just want you to know that I'm really sorry for the way that sometimes I spoke to you um, and treated you. And I started to try and go into like examples of it. And he just looked at me and he grabbed me and hugged me. He's like, it's okay. You don't have to apologize. Like he wouldn't even let me do it. He was just like, it's, he's like, I know it's fine. Like it's fine. So I tried to do my big apology and he's like, it's okay. And I, I like, think I did here. it two times. I think I tried two different times Cause I was like, I do want him to hear that I see him and that I see what I did. So he knows, but both times he was like, it's all, you know, like he didn't he could he just, not hug you. He had he to hug you. Mm -hmm. it was He's like all three hugging. Yep. So tender. So sweet. Right. Like, yeah. So reassuring. Yeah. So I, I tried, but I didn't yeah. need to, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. And then I guess I go back to that moment at the Valentine's day table when he said, I want you to admit that you're attacking me. Like, like, I don't know. Do you go back and, and wh what do you see about that? Or what, what do you think about that conversation now? That argument? So I think I didn't realize like how sensitive he is to my feelings where I'm like, he can feel what, what's coming from me more than I thought. And so even though I never verbally attacked him, I think he took my, the, the stress and the emotions, the frustration in my emotions, whatever I had in my emotions that was reacting to him, he could feel that. So even if I was saying it in a calm way and not like literally attacking him, he felt the, the vibe of my emotion and felt that as an attack. Um, so he, he picks up on the subtleties going on within me a lot, 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 lot stronger than I ever could have guessed really. So you're, you're big, strong man. It, it hurts. It hurts when he feels you, uh, I guess undermining his thinking. Is that fair to say? For sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wow. And so it sounds like you are accountable for exactly what he was asking for that yeah. night. Yeah, I am. I, mean, I am. Does that feel unfair? The only thing I think that does that is that doesn't line up for me is the word attack, because even if I felt a certain way or was frustrated with him or disapproved of however he was handling it, I didn't in I never intended it as an attack at all. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I don't agree with is the word attack. But at the same time, with that being said, I can't necessarily argue if that's how it made him feel. So, yeah, I, I think there, I think it could really go both ways. Yeah. Wow. Pretty amazing though. To uh, And so, has he changed? I mean, his behaviors have changed, but I don't think he has changed. His responses to things have changed now, but like, he's the same person. All these wonder, that's why I wanted to be with him. That's why even when things got really hard, like I still knew who he was. He was always that amazing, sensitive, caring. He's like so smart. He figured like he, he's a problem solver. He like, he really is my hero. Like he's always Aww. been that. Um, so no, he hasn't changed, but that all of those sides of him just like, shine like so much more frequently all the time you know so that that's the change yeah and and how have you changed um i definitely am more um careful with my words i'm careful in choosing what i want to say how much i want to say and when just to not say anything um, 
I try and err on the side of like, have him ask me for more rather than just like, it doesn't always go that way, but I try to do that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 So um, you're not perfect with the skills yet. It sounds like. No, I'm not perfect with the skills yet, mm-hmm. but I, yeah, I, I, I guess that's a, always a work in progress. Always. Um, I also, one thing that has changed is my self care. Like that was really hard for me. I, as a wife and a mom, a mom blending a family, I took on so much more than anyone asked me to do. And I thought that was my role. And um, I kind of, and then I, so I never thought it, I was, I was like, I thought self-care was impossible for me because I just had so much to do. Yeah. Um, Were you and like, I'll so, just skip that part. I'll just skip that part. I then. didn't, I tried to do it, but I still, I still, that, that is something that I still have to really like stay on top of. So I didn't skip it, but I, I probably, I, I wasn't as good at getting them all in. Um, and in the past that I think my, one of my biggest infractions in our relationship is that because I was doing so much for the family, I kind of felt a little bit, and I, I hate this word, but I, I was, um, I was a little bit in, I felt entitled to not being as emotionally accountable as I should have been. You know, I was doing doing this so so much. yeah, Yeah. So I had little weird things that were sticking points that I was picky about like kind of getting my way on as almost a, like a, a prize for all the work I was doing. And like, looking back, it, it wasn't, it wasn't fair of me at all. Like, you know, I'm, I have dietary restrictions, so I'm really picky with food. So if like something would happen with food, I would get like irritable and throw like a little mini fit and like be a brat. And like those kind of things would come up if there was something that was important to me that I wanted to have and didn't get, like, I felt like there's so few things that I really hold out on to get for myself. And if I'm not getting those, then it, I didn't even think about like what it's like for the people around me who have to deal with my being a brat, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. and, and that was actually his number one trigger with me, it turns out. So, uh. um, so that's, that's how I've tried to change the most is to be, more easygoing about a lot of those life details. Like if I'm not eating at the restaurant that has the exact kind of food that works the best for me, I'll eat something smaller and get a snack later. Or just realize there's going to be more meals in my week. This isn't like, <laughs> this isn't the, this is not my last supper. Like I'll be okay. Like, or just being more easygoing about a lot of details that I used to kind of be probably too big of a stink. I was a stinker about it. I was kind of a brat. I mean, I, I love hearing, I love that you would share that too, right? I was a brat too. I was worse than a brat. I was a <laughs> rager, you know, but I just love, cause we don't, you know, you never hear about that. People don't post pictures of themselves being a brat on Facebook and say, <laughs> here's my family. And I was just a brat, right? You know? yeah, <laughs> everyone, exactly. Look on everyone's faces like, ah, you know. And the so, look on my face. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going right? to post yeah. this as my selfie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's me. <laughs> so, so anyway, I just love that you would share that. But um, and, it, and it's, I just hear that your marriage is is very peaceful now because of these changes you've made. Um, what else? I mean, what, what is your marriage like today? So, okay. So I'm really bad at saying, um, like the, I can't like, you know, I still kind of probably take a little too much on and could do better with that. But I want to share one story that I used, I can't and how it worked out. So, um, we have two dogs and they're on a special kind of dog food that you can just get at one store. And, <laughs> I was somehow the dog food buyer always. Always. And so <laughs> I was I would I would even be on business trips and my stepdaughter or husband would text me, we're almost out of dog food. I'm like, well, I am in a different state. So why yeah. am I always like the emergency dog food person? And it would really st- I mean, it this is one of those things that just like push my stress levels above and beyond. And it only happens every six weeks, but like I'm not that good at those kind of errands either. So I have a hard time remembering them. And anyway, so I had been on a business trip. My stepdaughter had like told me, told me we're out of dog food. And I was just like, I don't know what to tell. I actually ended up ordering it online to have it delivered, even though I was in this super crazy long days business trip. And I'm like, I can't be doing this every time the dogs are out of food. So the next time the dogs were out of food, 
my stepdaughter's telling me, telling me, and I'm like, well, you need to tell your dad too. You need to tell your dad. But then I was like, well, it's not her responsibility to make him start to contribute to this part of things. So I waited a few minutes because I knew my husband would be coming in the garage at the same time. So we all three would be in the same place. And so I just said, so you guys, I can't be the only one who buys the dogs, the dog food, especially when I have a heavy travel schedule because I was getting ready to leave town the next morning. And so, and then the last, and I was like, and like last time they ran out of food, I was out of town and now they're about to be out of food and I'm going out of town. And I just, I can't be the only one who is in charge of buying the dog food. And then I just went inside. And that's all I said. And then I was like, hopefully the dogs don't starve. And then I went on my work trip. But he went that day and he got the dog food. And wow. do you know, that was in maybe July. And I have not bought dog food since. Whoa. Yeah. You're I'm on the group dog. text that we hear about it and I don't respond to them. And I don't do any. I will cook the dog's food. If we run out of food, I make them food. So I'm in charge of keeping them fed if nobody buys the food, but I've not bought the food. And you're, and it sounds like you're fine with that. That's I, that's I, a... I love it. Oh, it's so, it's small. Awesome. It comes up six times a year, seven times a year, but it's a big one for me. It's a big one. I love it. And what a great use of I can't because it wasn't. I can't do it now. Who's going to do it, right? Or I'm I can't do it. So let's we got to fix this, right? You're just like I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then I- yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was a great example of using I can't. And um, that's a great. Uh, so I, I, I feel like people can take that away with them, right? Like that's that's how I could use I can't too for that thing that's just driving me off the edge that I have mm-hmm. that I'm responsible for for some reason. Um, so, how, and how do you think, how do you think all this has affected your kids? You brought up your stepdaughters that made me curious about. Oh, they're, they're, they've noticed because. I don't know. My stepdaughter is so sensitive. And so if, if my husband would fly off the handle and be yelling and stuff, she would, she would come to me and be like, are you okay? I'm so sad. This, you know, like she, she, she had done that a few times and, and I could tell my son, my son was getting scared. He knew something was wrong when we were kind of about to get a divorce. I mean, he was watching very closely and checking in on me all the time. And, Um, you know, my other son, my, my husband's stepson, um, he was really sad too, when he thought that we were going to be, you know, splitting up. And, um, so they're all just peaceful. I can tell my, our son together, he's just like so much more comfortable. Um, and yeah, everybody notice, everybody feels peaceful and the house is just lighter, happier, fun. We're always having fun. We're always laughing. Yeah. No, no draw, no, no, very little drama. <laughs> very little. I mean, what a miracle, right? From you guys were talking about how he was going to stay for a few months to help out, and then the lease, and then you, which furniture? You guys were talking about which furniture? Mm-hmm. You we had it all decided. We had it all that decided. That is not happening. No, nope, we have all our furniture together. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what if? What would you say to someone who's they're deciding which furniture? they're going to get to keep right now. And she wants what you have where it feels peaceful and he's in a rush to put on his ring again because he doesn't want her to suffer one more second. And when she apologizes, he just like, come here, come here. And he has to grab her. She wants what you have. What What's your tip for her? Um, I would say to keep your hope alive. If it's something you want, keep your hope alive Um, one way that I did that and do that, if we get into a little hard patch where I'm like, I need to know that we're going to be fine is the podcast is super helpful for that because you hear about all kinds of situations that women are able to grow out of, you know, um, and, you know, definitely things that to me sound harder than what I went through, you know, things that were even farther down that road than where they got for me. So sometimes when I hear those stories, I'm like, oh my gosh, if this amazing woman can go from that place to that, I can have hope. Like, so that to me, I think keeping your hope like lit is super important. Um, And then just, I think your book was so helpful. It's such a great like blueprint for relationships with your spouse, relationships with other people, and just understanding men. If you don't understand men, 
And like, if you're someone like me that didn't have brothers or didn't like, I'm in a woman's industry. Like, I don't understand. I didn't understand men. I feel like I understand men now. I feel like when I interact with other people, I can reframe how to communicate. And I don't know, it's just so helpful. So I think just get the book and even just try the littlest skill that you feel comfortable with. Like it, it is overwhelming to learn like all this whole system of how to approach a relationship. Like if you've not done any of that really before. Um, so just do whatever thing seems like the easiest to do and see what the result is. And the nice thing for me, as soon as I started seeing a good result from this, this small step or this small step, it was, it was a lot more motivating to keep working on it. Keep, keep working on it. Keep listening to review the book, listen to the pod. I listen every week just to the podcast, just at least to the new one. And, and then a lot of times I'll go back and listen to an old one, just to help reinforce that this new way of thinking and also to get ideas of like, Oh, their relationships kind of like mine. This could work for me. Um, so it, it just gives you pra the, the podcast gives you really good examples of practical ways to incorporate the skills um, so that you can get, cause every relationship so different, like a new way to pull that skill in could be the thing that's like, makes a different, the big difference for you. Yeah. Now, so, and you went to those two marriage counseling sessions. Did you ever go back after that? We had one scheduled and then the counselor had a, a family event that came up. So she wanted to reschedule and my work schedule was really crazy right then. So I couldn't commit to a day. And then we just, we just haven't gone back. We haven't scheduled another. I mean, if something happens, I know we can, but like, I don't know that we'll need to. But I mean, I think we have to celebrate this. You went to marriage counseling and it worked. I mean, I think that's the first time I've ever said it on the podcast, right? So like, congratulations. You, I mean, in some ways I feel like you bucked the odds uh, by doing that, but, but that's pretty great. And then, and you've never, you haven't gotten any coaching since then? So no, I never, I haven't done one-on-one -on -one coaching. I actually last month, I, I thought, cause I've wanted last month I decided um, to join the ridiculously happy wives club because it's a goal of mine to be a coach. And so I was, I started thinking like, well, it's your goal to be a coach, but you've never even seen a session. So you might want to go and get online and like watch some sessions. And it was actually good timing because we actually had like a little bit of a, a, a like an argument right after I signed up for it. And I hadn't had time to get on and figure out my login and all that stuff. And so we got, we had a stressful week and kind of got into like a little bit of a, a tiff. And so I was like, okay, I better get in on this, <laughs> these group coaching sessions. Cause I need the extra reinforcement to help me like get through like this little patch that, that we had. And so that was super helpful. So I've gone on and gone to some, um, I went to your last live call and, um, uh, a couple of other group coaching sessions that were, that were awesome to watch. So mm, love it. And so what would you say to yourself if you could go back in time and tell Anya what you know now? Mm, what would I, t um, I would say that don't get discouraged that the, that just, do your best to focus on the skills and don't hold it against yourself that you didn't know them before this. Like mm -hmm. I, it, I, you just, yeah. I just didn't, you just didn't know it before this, but you found it at the right, the exact right time that you needed it. And that's, what's important. And now from here on out, like, I feel like I like kind of know what I'm doing with, like, I know what triggers I know. Like I, like you'll get there, like, like just, stay patient with yourself. You don't have to be perfect. It's okay. You didn't know this before and get, just do, do what you can now that you have it, do what you can now that you have it. You sound confident that you know how to make your marriage last and thrive. I do. And if I don't know how to do it by myself, I know I have like so much support. I can go to a group call. I can schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, I know I have like resources and solutions. And yeah, like, I feel like 
Like that was always my biggest thing. It's like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why this isn't working. I'm trying my best, but I don't understand. And now I'm like, now I can try my best and I understand. <laughs> so it's going to work a lot better. <laughs> it's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. And now, and now here you are not only doing your best, uh, but, but you've made a miracle in your family. You really fixed your family. It's an incredible accomplishment. I definitely want to present um, you with the best wife award. Thank you. Oh, I love it. It's a big deal, right? This is a big, a big deal. There's five people's lives who are changed because you had the humility and the courage um, and the willingness and the openness. You stayed open right to a new way of thinking that was totally different than what you were trained and raised with. Um, and, and you did it and you experimented and, and, and now you even feel inspired and called to help other women do the same thing so that there's, that nobody has to suffer just because that no one ever showed them how to yeah. use the skills. So congratulations. I can think of no greater accomplishment mm -hmm. than, than what you've done. Anya. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I and your story, you. your story is very inspiring and yeah, you've done a great job and I know how much courage it takes to do what you did. And in some ways you make it sound easy, but I know it's not, uh, it's not heavy. It's not, I mean, it doesn't feel like more exhausting work. I don't think and no. I, that came through in your story, but um, it does take some energy and some commitment and some focus. Yes. Uh, and you brought all that. And I just, it's just exciting to see what's possible. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing the whole story with us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. According to a study at Harvard, and this was horrifying to hear, if you know a couple who's getting divorced, you are 75% more likely to get divorced too. Woo. It matters who you listen to, which is why over 7,000 women like you who think that having a great marriage is important have joined our free Adored Wife group. The Adored Wife group is a launch pad where you can meet our certified coaches and discover the best next steps for making your marriage last and thrive. It's 100% free to join. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now. This is a private group and it's not for everybody, but if you are a wife or girlfriend who thinks that having a great marriage is important too, we'd all really like to meet you. So go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now to join us free. That's lauradoyle.org slash group. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, we're talking about what to do if your husband left because he was unhappy. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I started meal planning. I find all the recipes, I make a shopping list, I buy all the fresh organic produce, I put it in the fridge, and then I order pizza and throw the groceries away. Yeah. <laughs>